some serious nerves going on here. But they seem to be warming into it. They are timeless. I feel that about my car, definitely. <laughs> There's a surprise, the winner of the Love Day project. I never would have guessed. It's a good video though. It's like way early in the morning. I didn't even have my watch on. Like, damn, it's five, five o'clock. I desperately want to get a coffee. If I do, he'll start. Guaranteed. I knew it. What have I missed? So clearly safety is a, a big thing. Oh wow, and that's some sunrise out there. I like the way he's going through what sort of makes up the DNA of Model 3. You know, batteries, production, the safety, the design features. Yeah, he knows that supercharging is gonna be one of the key things that's gonna drive Model 3 forwards. Drives all electric car sales forwards. It's the one thing that nobody else seems to have worked out yet. Interesting. Lower range version. It's not going to be as long range as the Bolt, but it won't matter because they've got the superchargers. So, I mean, obviously. <laughs> Definitely go with the Model 3 if you're thinking, hmm, -mm. so looking forward to getting a test drive in a Model 3. I know, in the UK, it's going to be a little while, Ugh. but, you know, hopefully they'll cut a left-hand drive one over at some point. Of note, the cars are very quick. Fantastic. I mean, 5.6 seconds is very quick, 0-60 all on its own. 5.1 is, you know, even quicker than that. I mean, my car is 5.6 seconds north to 60. There's no question that that is f quick enough for any normal human being, as far as I can tell. In terms of range, again, 220 miles on a full charge, as far as I'm concerned, that is more than adequate for the vast majority of people. It really is. The key thing to doing long distances is having superchargers that will charge your car quickly. And, and be and be reliable as well because there's nothing there's no point in having a quick charger if it's not going to actually work when you need it. Well there you go. So if you want a model three there's gonna be quite a long wait. But I guess everyone already knew that. Well I think I'm gonna wrap up today's short, not one hundred percent planned uh, little review of what's going on. I I think it's interesting that model three has not had any big wow sort of oh look at this it flies and that's a good sign because of course these are cars that tesla is hoping to actually produce with high quality in very large numbers very quickly i seem to remember elon saying something like what was it five thousand cars a week by the end of this year and ten thousand cars a week by the end of next well, if they can ramp like that, wow. What else was there that sort of sprung to mind? I'm still not 100% sure about the back bit of the car. I didn't see that in action. So how are you going to get things in and out the back? I don't think it's going to be anything like the utility of a vehicle like the Model S, which for me would be a problem. For Soph, it would make no difference whatsoever. I mean, you know, she needs to put some shopping in the back every now and again. I think Model 3 would be perfect for her. She'd probably want the longer range one. It'd make me feel safer if she had the longer range one. We'll see what she feels about that. I should probably put a reservation in, shouldn't I? Woo. Quite a long queue as it stands. Just as a sort of an afterthought, it amazes me how courageous Elon Musk and Tesla in general are with their vehicles. It's very, very impressive what they're trying to achieve and they are betting the farm. They, always betting the farm. I think the car is going to be extremely successful and I think one of the main reasons it's going to be extremely successful is because not only does it look good and have a reasonable range but quite critically it has supercharger access and a supercharger network that is built out and that really answers the main problem that people say about electric vehicles. Nobody wants to go out and buy a car and then be unsure whether they can drive a perfectly reasonable 150 mile journey. I mean, let's say somebody lives, they have grandparents or parents and they live 150 miles away. If you've only got 
a 300 mile range in total, then that is a very stressful trip to try and complete. Unless you, you know, say to granny at the other end, oh, I need to plug in, can I open your living room window and climb through with a cable in hand? Nobody wants to do that, obviously. They can do it, people have been doing it, people have been taking circuitous routes from A to B, stopping at quick chargers for five years already. But that's not what a mass market mentality will accept from an electric vehicle. And Tesla has always known that, which is why they've put so much time and effort into their superchargers, which they're gonna be apparently trebling the number of supercharger stalls and locations in the next, I think you said by the end of next year. Okay, it is now, I was gonna say late, it's not late, it's early. So I'm gonna say goodbye for the day. I hope you've enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily blog. Bye. disappointing. <laughs> uh, I recorded like pretty much unusable sound from the actual video of the event. Sorry, this is just gonna be a short of my thoughts kind of thing anyway. So if you want to see the full video, it'll be on the Tesla YouTube channel and Tesla website in no time.